Hi guys, I'm Phil and I am here to help you become a movie maker slash photographer. Today we are in the happy place to be testing the iPhone 13 Pro Max only from a movie maker's perspective. So we're going to be checking if this bad boy is capable of doing good enough pictures and good enough videos for us to take on the go. Because as filmmakers we do not always have the possibility to have our good camera gear. So sometimes we are on the run and we see something cool, we maybe want to take a video spontaneously or we maybe want to take a picture and we have to rely on our mobile phones. And iPhones have the reputation of doing extraordinarily good photos and videos. So today we're going to be checking if this device is good for filmmakers. I'm not going to go over the battery life and the refresh rate and whatnot. This is only from the perspective of movie making. So we're going to be focusing on the camera. So let's unbox this bad boy. Here we go. So this is it. I mean, you know it from Apple that um, there's not much stuff in there. There is just a phone and a cable. And that is basically it. So let's check it out. This is the so this is the plastic removement part. Even though this is not so special anymore, since they um, remove the plastic. So here we go. Big device and yeah I would say I pack this into uh, a bumper and then we head out and check the camera. See you there. So here we are finally, it took some time and as always it's not perfect with the screen protectors. Okay, first things first, here I'm gonna test the macro mode and the thing with this macro mode is that it sometimes does not properly catch the focus. Now you see that the photos here where I am pretty close are decent, absolutely, details are sharp and even the edges of the plant are very well visible. And now let's try this in low light. So when the light goes down a little, obviously quality reduces. And also I noticed even more focus shifts for like, for example, it had the focus of the object, but then all of a sudden it did not. Here you see on the left side, especially where there's a little more darkness that you see the details um, disappearing, but that's, that's pretty much what every camera does. Going on to the selfie mode, same thing here. I'm gonna try a selfie in the regular mode and I do this with good light and with low light and as you see with good light the results are decent of course but when you go to low light mode obviously the quality reduces visibly but that's pretty much with every camera out there. Now let's go to the videos so I'm gonna try and make some 180p videos here I'm gonna rotate and good light conditions and here you see okay perfect you know you got a little bokeh effect in the back but the quality obviously is perfect and here I'm gonna try this with some light coming from the front which is also a good test my wife has the lights behind her the daylight and even the lamp um, put on me but look at her hair look at her hair this is the cinema mode and you see that her hair is like in the zoom chords, you know, with the blurry background because it's not actual depth of field, but simulated one, which means that her hair gets a little cut off. Okay, so let's try the movie mode again, this time with the selfie version. I did a little rotation here and I'll show you how, what that looks like. Here you see, basically, this is, sorry, this is the regular mode regular mode on the selfie camera and yeah it looks decent I mean the more light you got behind you the worse it gets the better the light is like here the better the quality gets but 
you can never expect that much from a selfie camera anyway so <laughs> you wouldn't film a lot with it unless it's for TikTok or something and in this case I highly recommend you get good lighting conditions because in low light selfie cameras they they really come to their limits as you can see here <laughs> yeah that's that's not good right but talking about the cinema mode I mean it has this nice effect that you can make your background blurry or yourself as you can see here it's 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 an interesting feature absolutely but is it worth all the money I'm not sure I'm gonna talk about this in the in the final verdict okay so yay or nay on the iPhone 13 Pro Max well as always it depends for example, let's say you have an old phone, like a five-year-old phone that does so-so videos, then you can have an awesome time upgrading to this bad boy. Because it does have 4K 60 frames per second movies, it does have this new movie mode, and yes, it can do very nice photos and videos. Now, on the other hand, if you already have, like, say, an iPhone 11, there's absolutely no need to upgrade, because you will pay almost three times the price just to upgrade by one percent maybe so if you have an iphone 11 keep it if you have no phone at all and you want to choose between a budget phone and the iphone 13 pro max get the iphone 11 if that makes sense so let's say you you want, you want to be on a budget let's say you want to have an awesome phone with an awesome camera in it but you don't want to spend too much I would highly consider you get the iPhone 11. Even today, in late 2021, it's absolutely worth it. I just used it until recently and it does fantastic 4K 60 frames per second videos. I'll link some videos here that I made, some B-roll that I made on my channel. Um, it's the Denmark movies and you will not see any difference between the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 13 Pro. So. This footage, for example, is shot right now on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So, and even though I switched on the anti-flickering, you can, might still see the blue light flickering a little. So, it's not perfect. And what's cool about this movie mode, for example, is that the background is blurry because it imitates a 2.0 aperture. It's cool. But for folks with glasses or long hair, it's the same thing that you might have experienced in Zoom meetings that it gets a little blurry and that it's not very clear where your body ends and where the background starts, so it makes some weird artifacts. Same thing here with the iPhone. So yeah, it's a cool feature, absolutely. So is the, um, the macro mode, but let's be honest, you're never gonna do macro shots, ever. Maybe once to test it out and then never again. So that's not a, that's not a pro point. The slow-mo, yeah, it's a little higher, you can do, um, 120 frames per second in full HD now, okay, even 240, okay, but let's face it, I never use that either. So what's the interesting part? The interesting part is that you can shoot 4K footage. Okay, you can do it with the 11 too. So my honest opinion, if you want to save some money, is get the iPhone 11, it's a fantastic phone. If money is not important to you and you are a total tech junkie like I am, then get the 13, oh, 13 Pro even. 30 Pro Max with a terabyte even. And that's my daughter. Cherie, je fais une vidéo. So that's a wrap up guys. Thank you for listening. I hope I could help you um, with this review of the iPhone 13 Pro Max from a movie maker's perspective. And yeah, so please hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out to grow my channel and I wish you all a good night. By the way, this is my setup right now. Up there's, <laughs> up there's the iPhone and down here in the pizza box are my notes. So I just took some notes to be safe and uh, we haven't even eaten all the pizza. So yeah, I think we might enjoy that right now. <laughs> Have a good one.